Bonjour. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm I'm fine. Thank you, Ibu. <laughs> yeah, no, we're really glad to have you here. Uh, I'm very happy. Begin. Diaspora. So we're gonna be talking about like um, visual art, your art, and then you know do the one of, of your art activities right here in New York. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, um, we just would like to ask you to tell the people who you are. Who is Beatrice? Please introduce yourself. Who is Beatrice? Uh, a very interesting individual. Hey. <laughs> Now, I was born in France, uh, French mother, American father, and raised over there. And uh, um, I think I always wanted to be an artist. It's not I wanted to be. It was it was in me. But anyway, as I was raised in France, and I came to the States uh, when I was uh, a grown-up. And while in France, I studied at the uh, Beaux-Arts. And um, that's where really I was introduced to African culture and then went on to La Sorbonne to get a master's of um, art history in African culture and art. And um, 31 years ago, I moved to the States, spent a lot of time in tech, uh, moved to as it's always my dream. Oh, it seems to be like uh, interesting. So, how is it like going in Paris as a, as a French American from a French mother and an African American father? Um, yeah, well, you know, at that time I didn't know or didn't know much about African American culture, so I was just uh, French moving to Paris. It was very exciting. It always been my dream to be in a big city and uh, for the culture you know in small cities in France the culture is it's small <laughs> anyway and I just wanted to meet people with, from different culture with different ideas and um, so it was a wonderful time I was very happy and um, like I say that's where I started going to the the school of, of Beaux-Arts and uh, meet very interesting people it's interesting. So, yes. uh, what what introduced you like to African culture? Okay. Well, when I was at the bazaar, I met my daughter's father, who was from Cameroon, and we took a class together. In uh, it was kind of introduction to architecture, and one of the projects uh, he chose to make maquettes of. Um, traditional village architecture in Cameroon and so you know I had to I listened to him he was telling me about it I started reading a lot more about African culture and also while over there um, I met um, Alun Badian I call him Pap uh, from Senegal and um, you know I remember going to his little room with his uncle and have my first Chibujian over there so that's the way I was introduced to African culture, and I was hooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like in those days, it was like Paris, like really culturally rich, like it is in, in terms of African art and African culture. Um, it was if you knew where to go, and um, I mean, you know, African art was still in the museum. It was kind of dead you know mask on the wall sculpture but i didn't know about uh, all that this later on you know when i took my first class about african art that um i realized how rich the culture was you know, but i met interesting people not always from africa but you know photographers actors so it was culturally it was very rich and, and, and you know, like African art is a, like a variety of voices. You know, like in terms of cultures, culture. Yes. Like um, painting them and everything. Mm -hmm. how, how do you define like uh, an African aesthetics? You know, I always say, well, an African artist 
Is it because you're born in Africa? Is it because you <laughs> you you paint about uh, paint or sculpt about Africa? If about Africa, you know, it's 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 very hard for me to to define. Um, but the African aesthetic at that time in Paris, you mean? Yes. Or oh, in uh, general, you know, African. Aesthetic in general, in terms of art, like um, the way it is seen and um, conceived right now in the art world. Well, I think no, it's it's really seen another way. But at that time, you know, Africa Africa was the dark continent. It was just seen more of an ethnologic point of view, the art, you know, not not really as they call it art, but it was more to study the culture, the different culture. Uh, different country that the art was coming from. You didn't know much about modern African art. Yeah, and then, yeah, this is the point right now because a lot of people are talking about like African contemporary art. Yes. And then for them, it's something new. And for them, there's no contemporary art in Africa. In Africa, in Africa. So what, what's your point of view about that? Yes, there is contemporary art in Africa. You know, I'm sure they are influenced from the traditional art in Africa, but to me, mask, sculptures, art, it's traditional. And contemporary is uh, artists from now that still have roots. It's their, it's the culture. They are influenced by it, but they take it in another, in other, many other directions. You know. Yeah, it's right. It, it represents their culture, but also now it really represents also more of the political climate. Right. Uh, and then let's, let's talk about your work, Beatrice. And uh, mm -hmm. your work is very intricate. So sometimes it's like a mixing media with a lot of beads. And yes. Sometimes it's like a very defined mm -hmm. portrait. Well, the thing is, I started by doing portraits. Uh, a, a lot of portraits, in fact, of African people, because to me it was a way to to teach <laughs> people how to see uh, the viewer, how to see African people. Uh, because w when you don't know, you kind of push back from from the art and um, or from from the person even. You know, you fear what you don't really know or understand. And to me, it was a way to show African people without really words, but just look at the image, look at the energy that comes out of it. But at the same time, I always loved patterns. That's why I love African fabric, because patterns to me are, is like letters, they're like words. They speak to you also, they have another energy. And I say, well, you know what? I'm gonna start mixing both. So, you know, they are the uh, more abstract and the figurative together. You know? And I love to mm -hmm. to paint. I love to paint or talk about women because women, in 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 general, always been kind of downgraded <laughs> compared to men. But it's even harder for women of color. So I just want to speak about all those issues. That affecting me also. I am a woman of color. Yes, you're right because um, women of color and women in general um, have a lot to say about what's going on in the world because they're the mothers, the sisters, the lovers. Mm -hmm. You know, so we every day have to pay tribute to them for um, you know risking their life to give birth to men. Yes. <laughs> yeah. In fact, one of my paintings was called A Woman's Job is Never Done. <laughs> it was showing all the different facets that we have as women. Yeah, and then the, the, the way you pet women, like their faces look like very serious face. Mostly there's no smile. No, because I think that you can show more to your eyes. A glance, it's more important than an open mouth with words. And in fact, when I paint a portrait, I always start with the eyes. It's just like the rest will, will come, you know, 
whatever. But I need the eyes to say what I'm to yeah to translate what I'm going to say. You definitely right and and let's talk about your mixing media work, which is something I really appreciate and I really like and it seems to be like time consuming because you you use a lot of beats and there's a lot of details. Yeah, yeah I would be crazy that. about detail. But, you know, to me, beating, um, it's a sort of meditation because you, you have to choose the bead, the color, the shape. So, and it's also another way of um, speaking. You know, beads also have an energy different than the one from the fabric, different from the one from the acrylic paint. So, and I love, love little, little details because I think that, you know, you look at a painting, you see something, then you go back and you see something else. So it's just like the story never ends. Yeah, because, um, and they have like a very um, strong magnetic power because I see like a lot of viewers I kind yeah. of like hypnotized when they see those pieces like uh, you know, in galleries. Mm-hmm. You know, like in terms of colors, in terms of like uh, the material you use in your in your work. Yes, I, I, I love colors. You know, that was one thing that <laughs> they didn't understand. I mean, one of the things they didn't understand about me in France. You know, why do you like bright colors that much? Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it was transmitted through the, the air to me and um, but I think colors are very important I mean you know they they need studies about you know how the, the art can heal and color is very important yeah because uh, it, I mean mostly most a lot of African artists the black artists like using colors. I mean, uh, most of them don't mix colors. They just like yeah. do it straight away. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the shouting energy. You know, you want your word to be your story to be carried away. Mm-hmm. And then you also do a lot of public art. So you did a public art in a in an aer- airport in Texas. Yes, in uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth airport in uh, in, in Texas. Um, yeah. And uh, it's a big medallion that was, I just created the design and um, then a fabricator from uh, Germany, Franz Meyer, uh, translated the design in mosaic. And um, it's in the international aisle of the airport and it's called Celebration. It's just, um, like always, a lot of patterns because patterns are very symbolic. And symbols can be understood by anybody, even if you don't speak English well, you can still understand it. So um, I I took patterns from all the different continents because it's an international airport, so people come from everywhere. And um, I put the symbol of the dove, um, different style, you know, African style, Asian style. I wanted people to come in peace and just find a little bit of themselves when they walk over the medallion and take it with them. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful to have your art in public. And another of your art is recently been set up in one of the uh, train stations right here in, uh, in yeah. New York. Yeah. Yes, through MTA, it's on yeah. the line, on the three train line, mm-hmm. and the stations are... Uh, Rockaway Boulevard and Junius. Junius hasn't been installed yet, but it will be, I think, towards uh, next month. And uh, so those stations are above the ground. So in the little windows, you see, um, that's where my design will be translated this time in uh, stainless steel. So I decided to choose proverbs, proverbs from the different uh, for the people who live around in the neighborhood. There are a lot of um, people from Jamaica, Guyana, and uh, I took proverbs from their culture in their language. So you have the uh, Jamaican Patois, Asian Creole, and it's like a book. There's the, the proverb and the illustration, 
and you can read it as the train enter and leave the station like a book. And I thought also that the younger generation do not really know much about proverbs, and perhaps they don't even speak Jamaican Patois or Asian Creole or Spanish. And I thought it might be perhaps a more a communication between generations. And I think people like to see something that pertains to their culture. You know, after a long day work or I don't know how to, you know, I think it would please please them to say, here's a little part of me here. And, and you, you know that, like, public art is a part of, uh, you know, American landscape of New York landscape. Yes. And you have your pieces and, and you know, public places. So uh, how do you feel about that? I'm very happy. It's more people. I mean, it's sharing even more. You know, it's not about the that much about the recognition. It's just I always hope that people will be happy to see uh, the the work in public art, and you know, it will please the community. That's that's a way, in a way, to give back. Yes, because um, art always puts smiles on people's faces. Yes, because I mean, you know, not everybody goes to museums or to to art galleries. I mean, some people are kind of scared because they say, "Oh, I don't have any knowledge. I will look stupid." Or no, but public art, it's right there. It's in your face. Yeah. You know, so you will see it, and you you know, you don't have to fear to for somebody to hear. Say, oh, oh, I don't understand that. It's right there. You know, you like it, you don't, but it it's there. You know, like in this world, everybody is a teacher, and artists are one of the greatest teachers. Yes, they, they and, are. And two years ago, you were a teacher, a professor, the actress, and you taught in one of the universities in uh, Texas, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Will you please tell us about like, your teaching experience and what you were teaching? Uh, I was teaching uh, watercolor, mm -hmm. and uh, I was teaching African art history. And... Um, I loved it, but at the same time, I'm a little bit selfish. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I prefer to paint than teach it. <laughs> yeah. So which university? But, 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 but it was great. Um, uh, watercolor, it, it was great, but I always had to fight with the students because they, they all wanted to try to paint my style to please me and I said no it doesn't please me at all I want you to find your own style your own spirit your own soul you know I teach you the basic but you have to be yourself don't try to please me by copying me yeah. which university was that it was uh, UT Dallas University of Texas in Dallas okay good mm -hmm. and, and how I mean, you lived in Texas for a couple of years before moving to New York. Yes. And, uh, what was the action like in, in Texas, Dallas? <laughs> and the risk of being <laughs> quite... Was it, was it like New York, like really, oh, no. like no, booming no. and a lot of artists everywhere? You have galleries, you have uh, museums, and... Um, but the thing is, every time I would visit a gallery, they would say, you need to find a black gallery. Just like because I'm a black artist, but how do you define a black artist? You know, when I, at one time I was painting floral, you know, I could have gone in any type of gallery. So it's less, a lot less inclusive than uh, than New York for sure. And at the same time, it's a lot smaller, so there's not as much going on. I mean, I'm sure it's better now, you know, I've been gone for nine years, but um, the art scene was not as exciting um, as as here. I mean, there are less galleries, so it, it seems, I mean, to me, it seems that I was always seeing kind of the same thing. You know, I mean, I met, had great friend artists over there, but it was a, a lot smaller circle. I didn't feel like I was learning a lot. Yeah, and from Texas you moved to New York and you know right now in Harlem, which is like a cultural oasis, uh, which is culturally rich. How mm -hmm. does it um, inspire the work you're doing right now? 
I mean, the diversity, you know, just walking in the street is just, um, you, you, you feel an energy that I never felt in Texas. You know, you, you can see so many different things, people from, from so many different cultures. It's, to me, it's an ongoing learning experience. I mean, even with the arts, you know, there are so many exhibitions, so many things going on. You don't even have time to see to see it all. But I like that energy. You know, you are assaulted by art everywhere, and I like that. Yeah, and then how um, is like culturally rich? There's a lot of stuff going on, and now there's a lot of galleries being opened in, in Harlem. Yes. Yeah. How, how do you think that will change the community with gentrification and people? Well, in yeah. Harlem or? Yeah, in Harlem, talking about well, art, and, art and gentrification in Harlem. Yes, I, 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 I don't know. I, if if the if those gallery kind of embrace more of. Uh, the artists that have been in Harlem for a long time, that would be great. But if they just come with their stable of artists from Seoul or whatever and just just stay the same, mm -hmm. it, I don't. It, it will not make a big difference for artists who have been in Harlem for a long time. You know, to me, then they're just coming because maybe the. I mean, it's less expensive to have a gallery in Harlem. Uh, than in Seoul, but uh, I hope that they will embrace outsider of their stable, their current stable, they will take artists from Harlem with them for sharing. If not, I don't think it will bring anything, at, uh, or maybe it will take away things from artists in Harlem then. Yeah, because, um, uh, you know I mean? A lot of artists need exposure, but to what sometimes what is crazy is about all these divisions, divisions like black gallery, white gallery. And yes. Finally, as an artist, you don't know a way you put yourself and where you put your art. Mm-hmm. Because they kind of like dictate you what you do. So you want to show artists of who does this kind of work, or artists from African culture or this. I think this is like a division in the world of art right now, and then. You know, it is. Boy, yeah. it, it is, and I mean, you cannot change. I mean, perhaps you can, but personally, I do not want to change my style to fit in a gallery. <laughs> so, so you know, if you don't like, if you don't want me because it's not the the style you want, well, that's okay. You know, I will be patient and wait. But too too many times, I think that yes, gallery just. They, they want a certain type of art. They don't really expand. And so I guess we just have to be, if we're not part of that that group, we just have to wait and see. You know, and I mean, the world is big. It's not just New York. You know, I'm starting to want to, to go outside. Why not Europe? Why not Africa? A lot of things are happening in Africa, so, you know. Yeah, and that's really one of the reasons why artists should move and try to see where the art can be shown and sold. Exactly. Yeah, because exactly. artists are like nomads, you know, wherever they see or wherever they know that time their art is appreciated, you mm -hmm. know, that's where they should move to. Yeah, you move where, you move where you are comfortable, you know. Yeah. That's why right, right now I'm... Uh, I'm going to be part of that uh, global uh, art community in Tubal Yalo, Senegal. That's yeah. very exciting. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why Brother Dale is interested in yes. building up, yes. setting up that global art vision, mm -hmm. which is going to gather artists from everywhere around the world. And this is the kind of world that we, we, we need, that the world of business. Exactly. And, you know, just, just be around people who are like minded. Yeah, it's going to be such a great communication, everyday conversation. It's, I think it's going to be wonderful and open the eyes of more people. Hey, here, look what's going on. You know. Yeah, definitely, definitely right. And then 
And the actress, um, I, you and I also sometimes collaborate. So we okay. have collaborated and some kind of work. How mm-hmm. is it like for you to collaborate with all the artists? Well, you my you my, you my partner in crime, so I love mm-hmm. to commit crime with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's wonderful because first you have to kind of let go of your ego. You know, it's not just you. Me, me, me with what I have to say. So, for instance, for us, it's you have to say something, I have to say something. So we communicate, there is a discussion. Uh, you know, it's question and, and answers mm-hmm. and it's exchange. And it's wonderful. I think it brings more energy. I mean, to me, it brings me more energy, more... Uh, I just want to do more. I mean, you know, you see some of the series, we couldn't stop. (laughs) We still had something to say. You say, oh, but that, oh, but that. And I think, you know, a lot of artists, more artists who try to collaborate. Like I say, it's hard sometimes because you have to let go of your ego. That cannot be any jealousy. Oh, you have a show and I don't. Nothing of that. So you have to be very open. And you have to be good friends. So it's not always easy. I recognize that. I mean, we know it. We try to have other people in our duo, and it didn't work. So, But I think more people should try to do that. Find, find your own partner in crime, and you'll see how much it adds to, to, your, to your own uh, art. Yeah. Your own way of doing art, because you know, for first, for us, it's two different cultures, so that that's what is wonderful. And you have your style; I have my style, but we didn't have any problem to put it together. Yeah, because that's what um, collaboration is about. Because a lot of artists think um, art is about competition, but it is not. Because when two artists collaborate and work on something. I think it it gives it like a very strong power, and it's always fruitful like for artists to be together and create things. Yeah, and uh, that's that's why our communities are created. Mm-hmm. You know, I think yeah. people have to start artists have to stop being jealous or trying to compete. Personally, the only person I compete against is myself. Yeah, that's the best competition. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, but because being an artist, sometimes it's quite a solitary function, you know. So it's wonderful when you can, you know, work with somebody and exchange and communicate, and it's really it enrich, you know, the the procedure you you follow in your work. It's to me, it's 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 beautiful. Yeah, and then yeah, come talking about like artwork and your work, and I. Realize that you are a person who like really you really like music, and then you made it. You did a theory about like music, jazz music. Yes, I okay. love and jazz music. I love mm. all type of music, really. Yeah, and um, not only you listen to music, not only you dance, but you also paint musicians and music. Yes, yes, yeah. I paint musicians, not really to make a portrait of them, but just just to put. I don't know to 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 paint that instant where or you are so concentrated or, or so happy to be singing or playing an instrument. It's just, it's just the feeling, the, the feeling that you, you know, when you, if you watch, if you listen to music, you feel it in yourself, but when you watch a musician, you, you can see it on, on their face, in their gesture, even in the, the way they are, they are, they are going to play that note. And that, that's what I try to express in, uh, you know, painting quote unquote portraits. Of musicians, oh, just then you just spent like the magic moment of music. Yes, yes. And there's a theory about like Nina Simone, which he did two years ago. The the which I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear. The Nina Simone theory. Oh yes, I love Nina Simone. I love her for, I mean, for everything she did in her life, for her voice, for the the, the words in her in her songs, for the melodies and. Um, you know, and she's a woman, so you know a lot of things she speaks in her songs. I, I understand. I can feel it. Um, yeah, 
yeah, and then you know your jazz Terry. Did you start printing jazz when you came to when you came to New York or? Oh uh, no no no! I, I painted jazz uh, before I came before I came to to New York in in Texas, and uh, my my father loved jazz, and I guess I took it from him. You know, even when I didn't know in France, so my parents in France didn't like jazz. So, was just where did you get that taste from? Well, you know, it came to the genes, I guess. So, yeah. I mean, your paintings are just like documentation because yeah, I know you did tell you about like African people. Yes. You did some paintings okay. about like um, jazz musicians and New York. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have like public arts in New York, but I don't see you paint anything about Paris. Your life in Paris or your childhood well, in Paris? <laughs> I don't know. Why? How come? I like to be in Paris, but I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> no seat from no seat from Paris. Nothing from Paris. You'll paint New York, paint Africa, but not Paris. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't paint New York. I paint New York, part of New York culture. And, yes. Uh, Paris culture, what I get is when I... And you know what? I didn't start painting African people until I came to the to the U.S. I guess I was surrounded by uh, African people in Paris, so I didn't have the need to tell about them. But when I came to the States, there were so many misconceptions that I had the need to say, okay, wait a minute. This is not the way you should see African people. I didn't have that need in Paris. Okay. In Paris, I was doing more abstract work. And, fl and flowers. Uh, no, flowers were also in uh, in San Antonio, but that was more commercial. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but in Paris, it, it it was more yeah more abstract work. Uh, I was inspired by like little things you can see when you look through a microscope, because it's another world. You know, it's just patterns again. Anyway. Yeah, and then a few years ago, I mean, one of your pieces was featured like in a, in a banner in uh, in African, no, uh, in 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 Harlem. Oh, the the, the banners, yes, yes. Yeah, well, banners. in fact, it was two jazz. Yeah, uh, they chose two of the the jazz painting to go on the banner on one the banners on one twenty fifth street. So yeah. that was you know that that was great. Uh, I remember telling all my friend, I'm hanging in Holland now. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what was that about? Was it like an event or celebrating music? It's, well, they, they used, I think they, they redid it again. Uh, it, 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 um, every year they would have a different theme. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would put some three, four, five different uh, artists' work on banners on 126 just to celebrate Harlem. Harlem culture, it would be music, fashion, or literature, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and that was fun also to have your art on. Yeah, that's your art okay. on I didn't see it. I said, well, you need to look up. <laughs> Stop walking and looking straight ahead. Yeah, it was, it was, it was too, too high. <laughs> yes. It was, it was well. too high to see, you know. Exactly. And what, what what else do you want to talk about that I didn't ask you? <laughs> uh, I just, what you didn't ask me, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I want to live forever because there's so many I want, I want, I want to tell more stories. I want to work more with you. I want to go to Senegal. I want to participate in festival. Uh, I want people to experience the joy and in those times, you know, the joy and that art can can bring. Yeah, I know you haven't been to to the to the Bible for the African art yet, but I think you read a, a lot about it. How do you see that kind of? Uh, the kind of concept of having uh, an African art vinyl. I think it's great. It's a, you know, you you need to 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 connect with uh, other artists. You need to learn about uh, other people and what they are doing now. I think it's it's wonderful. I mean, I would love to be part of a 
of a biennial. Even, you know, sometimes they say, well, you have to be African. And I'm like, well, I am, I guess, from a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah. I was not born in Africa. Like the same thing, Africa was born in me. I mean, you know, remember the story I told you about me going around my grandmother's table, yeah. beating with her knitting needle on a can or whatever, and she was just thinking I was crazy. But to me, it was the rhythm of the drum that I loved. You know, to me, it's like a heart beating. And I just, I just loved it. And I think that, you know, yes, Africa is, born and transmitted to the gene is born in you in a certain way. That's right. And then the only thing I notice right now is that there's a lot of African affairs and then the fairs are like uh, non-stop the old guys in New York and Paris and then London. It means there are a lot of artists, a lot of like galleries who are pushing with mm-hmm. open doors and opportunities for African artists and like taking African art to another level. Yes. They finally really realize how important it is, how um, much contribution African artists can bring to the world. You know, not just in the museum, you know, but all the, the, the contemporary art can bring so much. You know, and it's also learning about, it's a new culture that has its roots in the old culture, but it's just getting bigger and bigger and i think it's very important that i really i really like that yeah it's good because for me it's like it's the african artists telling their own stories with images yes and it 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 needs not to stay on one continent it needs to be seen around the world you know like like we see art from other cultures yeah, def- def- definitely, because um, nobody tells your story better than the way you do it. Exactly. And this exactly. is what is what is happening right now, because it's something you have witnessed, something you have lived, mm-hmm. and something you know how to explain and how to tell it. Yeah, so for something you have mm-hmm. Yeah, because art is like, uh, it's nothing else like uh, about understanding the other, because whenever, anytime you learn about the culture, so you try not to understand him more, and it's always good to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then, knowledge, knowledge is so so important. Mm. You know, they say knowledge is the best weapon. That's the title of one of my paintings. Because, yeah. like I always say, lack of knowledge brings fear, and fear brings misunderstanding. And we can see it that right now. <laughs> yes, and then and this is and which is like really good. But the other thing is, like, we have more male black artists than female black artists. Why not a lot of women want to get involved into art? Well, it's just, uh, you know, I mean, in, in some culture, even even when I was little, when the first time somebody asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, well, I will be an artist. Like, you know, there was no other way. And they just like, oh, um, not fine art and... So you'll get married to somebody rich and you stay home and do some art, you know. I'm like, no, 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 no. It will be my job (laughs) to do art. So I think that from a young age, it's put in your head that women, you know, yeah, you can work, but really art is not, it's not for you, you know. You can, you you won't, I was always told, you, you will not survive, you will not make any money. Yes, but if I don't do art, you know, I'm not happy. So, you know, you have to find a balance. And but that that's from the the beginning of times. I mean, you know, women in in Italy were not um, in the 16th, 17th century. They couldn't go to art school. So, you know, but it's now I think it's a lot easier. But it's still that misconception that. You know, art sometimes is not really for for women, but we have a story to tell. Also, no, yeah. I think it's, uh, uh, I mean, female artists are coming out more and more, and more being recognized. Yeah, which is which is like really, really great because um, you know, Africa being a continent of uh, 
60, 60, I don't know how many. I mean, being a big continent where over a thousand languages are spoken, I think everybody has to tell his own story because there's a lot of stories to be told. So we can mm-hmm. tell it by writing, painting, and, and dancing. And for that, we yeah. should have a platform. And the platform should be created by it, but not let anybody else create that for us. Yeah, you have to create your own platform to, to yeah. really to be heard. I think I think you are right on that. Yeah, because the world is just like a drummer. It's just like um, a theater and like a drummer. So we have to be on stage to tell what we feel and what we are living in and what we stand for. Yes, that's a beautiful image. Yeah, and, and you know, because uh, we will always need art in our world because without art nothing can exist and nothing can you know can be confused no it's it's like the foundation of society and um, the community you know art encodes the culture and Mm. art is you know making i mean it's like being an historian Mm. really you're the guardian of the you you are the guardian of the culture let it be you are a writer a poet and Painter, sculpture. Mm-hmm. You keep you keep the history. Right. Yeah. But there was Leo Fernandez who said also that the African is such an inspiration for the future of the African. What do you think of that? The African is such an inspiration for the future of the African. Yeah, it's always been. Well, look at Picasso and and other artists. Euh, bien sûr, parce que c'est, c'est une autre façon de, de, de penser et, euh, comme je dis, ça a enrichi leur, euh, leur propre vue et ils ont trouvé d'autres moyens de, de s'exprimer. C'est, bon, sans, sans vraiment copier, mais c'est, c'était, une, oui, c'était une grande source d'inspiration, bien sûr. Et pour moi, ces gens-là ont copié sur l'Africain pour être ce qu'ils ont, mais ils n'ont jamais rendu hommage à l'Afrique. Non, ben non, c'était c'était très très égoïste, c'était euh, très colonial. <rire> c'était de la façon dont oui, bon, d'accord, on est inspiré, mais bon, on va on va pas dire que l'art africain c'est vraiment euh, ex- extraordinaire. Mais c'est, mais que, que pensez-vous des masques africains emprisonnés dans les galeries, dans les musées euh, ben, comme, comme tu dis, ils sont emprisonnés. Euh, tu sais, quand j'ai commencé à étudier euh, bon, l'art africain, c'était aussi d'un point de vue ethnographique. Et puis, euh, quand j'ai vu, la première fois en fait, j'ai vu une vidéo des masques d'Ogon danser, je me suis dit, mais vraiment, voilà, les masques ne sont pas faits pour être sur les murs. Bon, ils sont sur les murs, euh, point de vue esthétique, on les admire, mais un masque n'est vivant que quand il danse. C'est-à-dire qu'il faut que les gens comprennent que, bon, pour l'art traditionnel africain, ce n'était pas un art euh, qu'on, qu'on doit regarder un art immobile. C'est un art qui avait, euh, comment j'arrive même plus à trouver mon, mon français, a purpose. Oui. oui. On danse un certain masque pour, euh, pour une célébration de mariage, on danse un autre masque pour euh, un enterrement. Donc, euh, oui, le masque ne devient vivant que. Que quand, il est, que quand il est dansé, euh, les sculptures, c'est une sculpture poterie, elles, elles avaient aussi, euh, euh, comment dire, c'était un, un, un moyen, un, on les utilisait. Mais, mais parfaitement, mais c'est ce que les Africains ne parlent, ne parlent pas, les masques qui sont dans ces musées, dans ces galeries, les masques qu'on nous a volés. Ben, ils étaient volés, c'est, oui. C'est, 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 c'est une partie de la sculpture qui est effacée ou bien qui est disparue, mais... Et donc, on doit, on doit en parler pour voir comment peut-on faire, comment les pays africains peuvent faire pour récupérer ces objets euh, d'art africain qui sont... Euh, ah, ça, ça, je ne sais pas comment ils peuvent faire pour récupérer. Là, c'était volé, mais bon, euh, comment... Euh, euh, enfin, vraiment, les, les musées, tout ça, on, on fait tellement d'argent avec, avec tout ça. Je ne sais, je sais pas comment les, les collectionneurs... Hein, le, euh, l'argent qu'ils ont attribué à, à ces masques, enfin, je suis allée dans des ventes aux enchères, c'était vraiment euh, hors de prix. Ouais. Mais ça, c'était hors de prix 
pour, pour l'argent pour un Européen, mais pour un Africain, le prix n'est pas... C'est pas d'argent, c'était une, une part de même qui a été volée. C'est parfaitement. Et puis, ils ont trouvé beaucoup de noms d'étiquettes pour ces, pour les, pour ces, euh, ces sculptures qui sont dans ces musées. Art mm -hmm. africain, art ancien, art primitif. Oui. Vous voyez Je préfère art premier que primitif. Ça m'a toujours... Euh, art... Primitif, ça m'a toujours énervé. Art, 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 art africain. <rire> Ce objet, ils ont trouvé plus, plus de 4 ou bien 5 noms. Écoute, ce n'est pas pour marginaliser ou bien pour déterminer l'art africain. Non. Mais tu sais, bon, l'empire le, 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 colonial prenait ce qu'il voulait, quoi. Et, euh, mais ça, sans jamais rendre hommage, euh, rendre hommage à l'Afrique. La, à, à C'était comme, euh, tu sais, les, les, comment, les, les foires coloniales, les expositions coloniales à Paris, où ils mettaient des, euh, des, des, des Africains pour montrer comment ils vivaient, mais ce n'était pas pour, euh, pour les glorifier du tout. C'était, regarde comment ils vivent comme des sauvages, regarde, nous, c'est en fait pour se faire valoir. Regarde, nous, on est quand même mieux parce qu'on ne vit pas comme ça. Oui, parce que parfois, ça me touche que... Si les gens disent que la colonisation est un mal nécessaire, moi, je suis contre. Je ne suis pas du tout d'accord parce qu'ils ont beaucoup, euh, je pense, saboté notre culture, ils ont beaucoup... Bien sûr. Fait de, de mal choses sur... I mean, c'est triste vraiment ce qui s'est passé. Non, mais c'est une question de, 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 de pouvoir. Moi, je dis toujours, les gens qui, qui veulent prendre le dessus d'autres gens, c'est parce qu'ils ne se sentent pas trop bien eux-mêmes. Bon, puis c'était aussi pour euh, euh, l'argent. C'est tout, comme commerce. C'est ça. Mais bon, il fallait aussi qu'ils trouvent euh, toujours quelqu'un euh, en dessous qui pensait soit en dessous d'eux, quoi. Enfin, moi, je te dis, quand j'étais à l'école primaire, euh, la description de l'Afrique et des Africains, ouf, dans les livres de géographie, mais vraiment horrible. Ouais, horrible. Ah, bah, oui, 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 la description d'une personne africaine avec les lèvres épaisses, le nez épaté, les cheveux crépus, comme de la laine. Ah, mais ça, c'est votre vision. C'est la vision européenne. <rire> mais c'est à coup de cela que les Africains doivent écrire et, et raconter le peuple, le peuple ce soir. Voilà, il ouais, ouais. y a pas, y a pas un, un dicton qui dit que tant que c'est le chasseur, euh, que tant que le lion ne racontera pas son, son histoire, ou c'est le chasseur qui, qui gagnera, je ne sais plus que... Oui, oui, je me rappelle, in the story of a hunting, it's mm -hmm. only the, the, the hunter who tells his story. But... Mm -hmm. Exactement, <rire> exactement, donc il faut que, c'est tout, il faut, il faut que les Africains disent leur propre story. Pas une, pas une histoire... Euh, euh, qui a été euh, créé par, par, par les Européens euh, parce que bon, bah, eux, ils avaient d'autres euh, vues et puis, et puis c'est tout. Oui, parfaitement. Euh, Sam, alors, je pense qu'avant la fin de notre émission, peut-être que Sam a quelque chose à dire. Allô, Sam Ah oui, allô, Béatrice. Comment tu vas Oui, ça va vraiment. On a, on a, a écouté euh, l'entretien très riche. Vraiment, et c'est une première, ça ne ça va pas arrêter ici, hein. ça ne va pas s'arrêter là. Donc, euh, d'autant ah, plus que Dieu. la famille s'agrandit. Je suis bavarde. Ah non, non, mais c'est bien, <rire> oui, vous, vous êtes en train de, de, de bien parler même, de faire connaître votre art et tout. Et comme je le dis, ça va s'élargir jusqu'à Toubab Djala, où, là où il y a Daouda. Voilà. Voilà, et, sur, et pour le village artistique aussi, donc les projets mm -hmm. sont là. Euh, donc oui. vraiment, on est content de vous, de, 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 vous, de, vous asseoir, de vous recevoir ici. Donc je pense que Dr. Fay est en ligne. Il a un ami qui, a, qui, qui, qui vit au Kenya en ce moment, c'est un Américain. Et actuellement, il est euh, au Texas. Uh -huh. Oui, donc je vais lui donner la parole pour voir euh, s'il a quelque chose à dire. Allô, Dr. Fay? Wa salam alaikum, Modu. Oui, wa alaikum salam. Afik, how are you doing? I, I have... hear the sister, she is really interesting. Ibn Doi too, how are you guys doing? Hey, Mr. Fay, how are you? I'm missing you, brother. Ibn Doi, uh, what's going on, man? Y yeah, I'll get back to you. <laughs> I know, I'm all right. Everything is good, bro. Missing you a okay. lot. Okay. Well, 
Uh, let me introduce you. I, I have a friend of mine. They've been friends for almost 20 years right now. He's Meredith Bell. Uh, he's a, a brother, African-American, living uh, from uh, California, and right now living in Kenya, doing wonderful jobs uh, around the, the, the continent. So uh, he's just visiting and spending some time with me here in, in, in Texas. And uh, Meredith? Greetings, greetings, Meredith Beal. Wonderful. Thank you for inviting me and, and having an opportunity to listen in to the sister and your discussion of art and culture. Oh, thanks for listening. It's very to hear your voice. Yeah. Great, great. Yes, I, I, I'm from L.A. originally. Um, I moved to Texas in, in 95 to uh, work at Dell Computer. I was global webmaster at Dell for a while. But I bought several radio stations in Texas um, a couple of years before leaving Dell. And then I, I actually wound up uh, being named Texas Broadcaster of the Year. Then the Bill Gates Foundation sent me to Africa because he funded a program to uh, improve the management skills of media owners so that it would create more sustainable media organizations. So that's what I've been doing the last few years on the, on the continent. Well, that, that, that's a great job because Africa and their technology right now and the field you, uh, the field in which you are is like one of the things that um, we have Africa to be forward. No, definitely. Innovation and technology is changing everything and is a, a great opportunity uh, for us to leapfrog again in the same way that um, mobile technology allowed Africa to uh, skip the step of, you know, cable everywhere. And with uh, the digital movement, and then something called the open data movement, there's a tremendous opportunity to leverage this information to to help with our development. Yeah, because um, can I can I ask a question? Because uh, how, how really? is Africa doing in terms of technology? Is it lacking like behind, or is it going forward? Kenya is leading the world in technology, and by that I mean, for example. One cell phone company in Kenya called Safaricom invented mobile money years ago. And that, that, by that I mean, when I go to the grocery store, when I get to the end of the line, I pay with my phone. People can pay their electric bill, their school fees, send money to their parents up country, et cetera. To give you an example of scale, that one cell phone company uh, called Safaricom, in one month alone, they did more financial transactions than Western Union did worldwide. 